This is green ash. It's in the family Oleaceae. The genus Fraxinus, and this one specific epithet is Pennsylvanica. Now, Fraxinus Pennsylvanica, green ash, is probably disappearing from many of our landscapes due to the emerald ash borer, which is an invasive pest from Asia, and it likes plants in the genus Fraxinus. That's an important part to remember. Fraxinus are the true ash. There are other species, uh, mountain ash, uh, for instance, that are not susceptible to the emerald ash borer. So being able to identify whether something is an ash, a true ash, or some other species is important in thinking about how we might treat for disease. So let's take a closer look at some of the identifying characteristics of the green ash. Here we see the bark of the green ash. Some people have described it as looking like little diamond patterns here or canoe-like patterns. You can see narrows and narrows and then a little wider as it goes in. Uh, personally, I don't see diamonds or canoes, but if you see that, good for you, if that helps you. Otherwise, it just has this interlacing pattern from my eye and the ridges come to more of a flat top instead of a peak. This has more of a grayish color in, as opposed to brown, so keep that in mind. The smooth, or the young ash would be a smoother in terms of the bark texture. Green ash has a compound leaf. So this entire structure that we see is a single leaf. These individual blades are called leaflets. This is a pinnately compound leaf. Where the petiole here would attach to the twig is where a bud would arise for new growth. This particular leaf has an odd number of leaflets, and ash typically can have between three and maybe seven for green ash. Sometimes you'll see oddities where one is missing or the top leaf here is fused with one of the side leaves, but this would be a representation of what we would expect to find for green ash. Here's what we see in terms of the foliage and how it's attached to the twig. We're going to take a little bit closer look at this, but it's sort of nice to see that mostly you see the foliage just at the very ends of the twig, and you don't see as much going all the way through the older parts of the twigs. Looking just at the twig, we can see that these are oppositely arranged, and so the bud and the leaf appear opposite from each other directly on the twig. To identify the difference between green ash, white ash, blue ash, black ash, and, and most of the ashes, you'll have to look at the terminal bud and this lateral bud, and this light colored green is called the leaf scar. Now I've prematurely torn a leaf off, but that's where the, the same similar scar that a leaf would leave in the fall. Here we can see that the scar itself is flat topped where it runs into the bud. If we were to see this on a white ash, which we will in another video, you'll see that it dips in. I was taught to remember this that Pennsylvania is a flat topped state, so Fraxinus pennsylvanica has a flat topped leaf scar. The terminal bud, which is this one at the very top, also is a little different. It's more pointed and a little browner than what we would see in the white ash. Green ash also has seeds. This particular green ash doesn't, and many of the green ash we might see in our cities and towns may not produce seed. But if you see a seed, they're these, again, as someone once described them as kind of a canoe paddle, but it's a samara, and this is roughly what they would look like. 